Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create this pattern. Here is the color group I will be using for this project. First you will need to create an isometric grid. If you would like to learn how to do it, please check out my previous tutorial. I've included a link to it in the description below. For this grid I set the horizontal and vertical dividers to 40. Let's zoom in, change the fill to any color you like, get rid of the stroke and select the pen tool. Now we will draw this shape. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Make sure you start at the intersection and not a guide. If you are unable to place the anchor point on the intersection, go to view and make sure all the snap options are unchecked. And try again. Now follow the template to create the first shape. Make sure all the corners are aligned with the grid. Let's change the color and draw a second shape. Select another color and draw the last shape. Check again to make sure everything is aligned. And we could already create a pattern using those three shapes. But we are going to add more details to it. We will create lots of ellipses and arrange them in rows. First select a different color and draw a diamond shape. Then go to Effect, Stylize and choose Round Corners. Set the radius to a higher number to get an ellipse shape. Let's rotate it by 90 degrees. Next press the letter S for the scale tool and then press enter. Make sure the scale is set to uniform and type 20. Click OK. Let's place this ellipse on top of this grid cell and create a copy at the bottom. Create another copy and place it at this corner and one more down here. Next select these two shapes and we'll add one more ellipse in the middle. To do this we will use the blending tool. Go to Object, Blend and select Blend Options. Set the spacing to specified steps and type 1. Now either go to Object, Blend and choose Make or press the Ctrl, Alt and B keys on your keyboard. Try to memorize this keyboard shortcut as we will be using it a lot. Now select these two shapes and do the same. Instead of going back through all the menus, use the keyboard shortcut to apply the last setting. Next we will reflect these shapes to the other side. First let's separate them so we can select each one individually later on. To do this go to Object and choose Expand Appearance. Go to Object one more time and choose Expand. Now press the letter O for the Reflect tool or select it from the toolbar panel and while you are holding down the Alt key click on this intersection to set the Reflect point. Set the axis to Vertical and click Copy. Let's separate these three ellipses. So like before go to Object and choose Expand Appearance and go to Object one more time and choose Expand. Now right click with your mouse and choose Ungroup. 
Let's ungroup the other sets as well. Next, we will add six more ellipses to the top row using the blending tool like we did previously. I will be using the keyboard shortcuts to save some time. First, select the top center and the top right ellipse and change the specified steps to six. Now apply the blend and expand it. Select the two center ellipses and this time change the specified steps to 7. Apply the same settings to the last row. And repeat the same steps with the other side. First select all the ellipses on the right and ungroup them. Next we'll copy all the ellipses and place them over the green and blue shapes. First let's group them together. Select one of them then go to Select, Same and choose Fill Color. Now press the Ctrl and G keys on your keyboard to group them together. If you like, you can change this group's name. Next, with this group selected, press the letter R for the Rotate tool and while you are holding down the Alt key, click in the center to set the rotation point. Now either type 120 in the angle window or 360 over 3. Then click copy and press the Ctrl and D keys on your keyboard to repeat the last step. To keep things organized let's give all these groups names. Select the right side ellipses, double click on the name and change it to ellipses R. Select the left side ellipses and change this name to ellipses L. Now select the top ellipses and change the name to ellipses T. Select the ellipses on the right and apply this color. Select the ellipses on the left and apply dark brown. Finally, select the top ellipses and apply white. And we are ready to create a pattern. Let's turn off the grid and select everything. Now drag it into the swatches window. We can delete everything from the artboard, but just to be safe let's create an extra copy. Now lock the bottom layer and turn off its visibility. Select the top layer and now delete everything from the artboard. You will notice that the swatch we've created is still here. Double click on it to open the pattern options window and let's make some adjustments. First change the tile type to hex by column. Highlight the number in the width window and using the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard adjust the spacing so there is no gap between the tiles. Now do the same with the height value. To exit this mode either press the escape key on your keyboard or click on this arrow. You will notice that the fill color is set to our new pattern swatch. And now any shape you draw will adapt this pattern. If you need to modify this pattern you can easily do it. First double click on the pattern swatch to open the pattern options window. Let's adjust the spacing. Click on the pattern tile tool switch to the direct selection tool 
and select the green shape. You can change its color or use no color. Let's change the fill to none. And do the same with the yellow and blue shapes. The light ellipses are almost invisible on a white background. Let's go back to the pattern options window, switch to the selection tool and select the light ellipses. Now we can apply a different color. I'm going to use the light color we had before. To make the light color stand out, we can add a different background. I used this blue for the bottom layer and this darker blue for the texture. If you would like to learn more about how to apply textures to your background, please check out my previous tutorial. I've included a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.